Hello and welcome. We have made really, really good progress in this course. There's just one little last bit to do, and that is the, the integration into the user's endpoint. And that really is just to round this off in terms of fetching the user's information from that protected endpoint in our API. Once we retrieve that information, we can then just display it on the dashboard. It's just a, a way to simulate having a private protected route uh, on the front end. In the last lesson, we finished wiring up that login form to the login endpoint and everything's been working well so far. Let's crack on and get, get started straight away. We can head on over to the profile.js file. So if we quickly just insert our user name and password that we have been testing with, just to see what's going on here, you'll see once we, once we are in this dashboard, we just have the name John, and this just corresponds to the information that we have here in our HTML. I think just the only change that we need to make to this HTML form is the removal of the hard-coded text that we have in there. So I'm just going to remove that and we can hit enter. And that's all we need to do in this profile.html file. We can head on over back to the profile.js file and then we can start working on our JavaScript to write that integration into the user's endpoint. And just to remind ourselves here, initially we wrote this uh, conditional check that's going to run when the window first loads. And it's basically checking if the user is authenticated by retrieving that key value pair from the session storage. And if there is no item is authenticated, it's just going to create that alert, access denied, and then reroute them to the, the login form. And so now that we, and so the next thing we need to do here is we can just create an else case in our conditional here. And this is where we're going to be handling our integration into that user's endpoint. So we're going to, give us a little bit more space. And as we have been doing, we can just open up a try cache block here. And we're gonna start by handling the error case. And in this case, we're just going to uh, create an alert. I'll use some string interpolation here. We'll say fail to load profile. Then we'll just say error dot message. And we can use the all conditional here if there is no error message, we can just uh, default to something like unknown error just to, to handle both cases there. And then once that alert's been popped up, we can just do a window.location.href and then reroute the user back to the login form. All right, so that's handling the cache blocks. Uh, that's if anything goes wrong in the try block here, this is going to revert to, to this kind of default catch. And that's just kind of alerting the user and then taking them out off to that login page. In a similar way that we did in our login form, we can create a constant here. We're going to call that a response and we're just going to set up the fetch request here. We're going to want to use the await keyword here. And so at the top where we've marked our function here or for the, the window.onload, we just need to make sure we mark this with the async keyword. So we're going to await fetch. And because we've got our proxy server up and running, we can just reference the API slash user endpoint. And then the last argument here, we can pass in an object with some, some options. The first one being the method. And in this case, it's going to be a get. We can set up some headers, which is an object. And we're going to use that content type. And this will be the application.json. And lastly, we're just going to pass in this credentials key and we're going to put this string include. And this is just going to ensure that the cookies that we have or have been set uh, by the, the login request is going to be passed on with this request. And then that's going to be used by our node API and Passport's going to use that to ev evaluate whether the user is authenticated or not. Right, and now as we have been doing throughout the course, we can put a debugger here. Uh, and before we do that, let's just head back to our login page. And then I want to just make sure we create a new fresh set of, of uh, tokens and uh, cookies and that type of thing that we're working with. So put that debugger in once you've, you've gone back to the login page and then you can just hit uh, save there. Once that's done, let's do a fresh login. And as we head on over to that profile page, it's going to then make this response and it will hit the debugger. So I'm going to click login here. You can see as we hit this debugger, we can take a quick look at the response. You see it says everything everything went okay here. Status 200 and everything's looking good. And so we can just jump on over to the network tab and take a look at this user over here. You can see it's got a 304 not modified and that's because I've made this 
request previously. You'll see on your side, if that was the first time you're doing this request, going to return a, a 200. And so to take a look at the preview and response, I'm just going to hit play here and you're gonna see. So in the response that we received back, you'll see that we get an email address and an ID as well as the name and the first name. And so now we can use this information to put that into the dashboard. I'm going to remove this de debugger and let's take a quick break over here. We've done the initial integration that we need. In the next lesson, we'll do the work to create some HTML elements, attach them to the DOM and use that information from that response to display that information. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Cheers for now.